Welcome. In this video, we'll be walking through the instructions, setup, and gameplay for the tabletop simulation called the Serengeti Game from the Open Syed High School Biology Unit, Ecosystem Interactions and Dynamics. Through this game, we are investigating the question, how do predators interact with the wildebeest migration? My name is Erica, and I have two friends playing with me today, Sarah and Teresa. Hi. Hello. Let's get started. In this video, we'll be using a digital version of the game created by a high school biology teacher in Denver, Colorado, Sam Long. A huge thank you to Sam for sharing this resource with others. In your classroom, you'll likely be using a printed version of the game. So for some background, the Serengeti board game is designed for three players, which is why myself, Sarah and Teresa are all here. If you have more than three people, then you can pair up into three teams but there are three roles in this game, hyena, wildebeest, and lion. This game has no winning or losing. The purpose is to simulate wildebeest population change due to predator and prey inter interactions and migration patterns of the wildebeest. So each player or pair of players in the game takes on the role of one of those agents, lion, hyena, or wildebeest. And the game consists of four turns and each turn has four events. You can also think of these four turns as seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. And the first event in each turn is the wildebeest migrate to a new seasonal location. The second event is that each player pulls an event card in this order, wildebeest, then hyena, then lion. On that event card will be some sort of action that takes place. And so the agent, the person playing will follow the directions on that event card. The third event in a turn is that the hyena and wildebeest complete a hunting event. They use dice to determine the results of the hyena and the wildebeest hunting. And then the fourth and final event in each turn is the lion and wildebeest compete, complete a hunting event and use the dice to determine the results. So the entire gameplay ends after completing all four seasons of the year, also called turns. So you complete those four events four times. into setting up the game board for play. You should have three players playing the game. If, some, if more than three, some people can double up and work in a pair. Each person or pair is assigned an agent, wildebeest, lion, or hyena. Today, Sarah is going to be the wildebeest. I'm going to be the hyena, and Teresa will be the lion. So you can see the materials needed on this slide on the right. So we have our Serengeti game board. We have 21 wildebeest tokens, 22 hyena tokens, 28 lion tokens. There are 16 event cards, six dice, three of one color and three of a second color. And then you'll have a data collection handout that you'll use throughout the game. So the first step is for the wildebeest to set up on the game board. So the wildebeest agent, the player playing the wildebeest, will place their 21 tokens in the green turn one area. You can see turn one is labeled here and outlined in green. Each token needs to be in its own green wildebeest territory square. And all the wildebeest must be touching another wildebeest token. So you'll have 11 individual wildebeest tokens with one wildebeest on them, six small group wildebeest tokens, and four herd tokens, which has that large number of wildebeest. Unlike the wildebeest, the hyenas and lions are not confined to turn zones. So when we set them up, we're gonna place them across the entire game board, not just in the turn one zone. Each group of touching brown squares is considered a hyena territory. And so the hyenas will place their tokens in their brown territories across that entire board. Each territory, so each group of touching brown squares must have a clan token. So that's that hyena token with the largest number of hyenas on it. So each group must have one of those. And then the individual and small group tokens, so the single hyena or the group of three, those can then be dispersed throughout the remaining spaces. 
Lions are set up similarly to hyenas. So lions will place their tokens in their yellow territories across the entire game board. And similar to hyenas, each territory, each group of yellow spaces must have a pride token, so a large group of lions. And then any combination of the individual and small group tokens can then be displaced throughout the remaining lion territories. There are 28 lion tokens total, seven individual, seven small group, and then 14 pride. The game consists of four turns. You can also think of these as one of the four seasons in a year. Every turn or season has four main steps or events. As a reminder, this game is a collaborative simulation and not necessarily a competitive, competitive game. So we're gonna move through the steps of each turn together. So the four steps are wildebeest migration, drawing event cards, hyenas hunting, and then lions hunting. We'll look more closely at each of these, including the dice rolling, as we move through the game. The first step is to set up the wildebeest. We've already done this for turn one in our game setup, so we can skip this one for now, but we'll come back to this when it's time to start turn or season two. Next, each agent draws an event card and applies the instructions on that event card to the game board. We'll always move in this order, Wildebeest first, then Hyena, and then Lion. Even if the card does not have your agent on it, you would still complete the action on the event card and apply it to the board. So Sarah is the Wildebeest, so she's going to go first and read her event card. So my event card says, a flood forces a lion pride to leave their territory. Yes. Remove one lion pride, large group, from the map. Now the other lions in that territory cannot hunt. So I'm going to pick this guy here, and I'm going to move him, this token, down to the extra pile. So now we're going to record that data on our game data collection document. So make sure that you've listed your agent on your data card. Each agent should have a data card that they're recording on throughout the game. And then you'll record your investigation question underneath. So make sure you've done those two things. So for that event card, we're gonna start by identifying the season. So we're currently in turn one, which is winter. I'm gonna highlight winter. The activity that we just engaged in was an event card. And then notice how this section is just for hunting. So since we weren't hunting right now, we were doing event cards, we can skip those. But then we need to document our change in wildebeest population. So that event card didn't impact the wildebeest, so we can put zero here. So next, the hyena will draw and apply an event card. So this event card says, a lioness kills a wildebeest that was old, sick, and couldn't keep up with the herd. Remove one individual wildebeest from the map. So I'm going to grab this one and remove it from the map. And then we'll record our data. So we're still in winter. This was an event card again. And our change in wildebeest population this time was minus one. And now the line will draw and apply an event card. My card says, a small group of hyenas kills a young wildebeest calf. Remove one individual wildebeest from the map. Here's my wildebeest. And there he goes. So we'll record the data again, winter, an event card, and then our change in wildebeest population was minus one again. Next of our four steps in this turn in our winter season is for the hyenas to hunt. And so before hunting, if desired, the hyena, the predator can move each individual or small group hyena one space if it will give the hyena a better hunting position. So for example, I have um, small group, I have an individual hyena here. 
They currently aren't in a hunting position because they're not touching any wildebeest. So I want to move this one one space up. And now they're touching three different wildebeest groups. Same thing up here. This hyena isn't touching any wildebeest. So I'm going to move this one down one space so that they now have the opportunity to hunt that wildebeest. So all small group or individual hyena tokens that are touching a square at the wildebeest can hunt. The clans, so the large groups of hyenas cannot hunt. And if the hyena token is touching more than one wildebeest token, so such as this hyena here, where it's touching one, two, three, they're gonna roll to hunt each of these to try and hunt each of these wildebeest tokens. Okay, so now we're gonna roll the dice to determine the outcome of these three different hunting scenarios for this hyena. So since I have one hyena, an individual, I'm going to use one die. So I'm gonna bring this one forward. And then I'm gonna hunt this wildebeest first, this individual. So Sarah would also pull out one die. And then we're gonna click them to roll. So since Sarah's, the wildebeest die was higher, the wildebeest is successful. And so nothing happens or changes on the game board. So we're gonna record this on our data card. We're still in winter. This was a hunting activity. The wildebeest token was an individual. The predator token type was hyena. And it was also an individual. And the prey was successful. So the change in wildebeest population was zero. So now this hyena is going to hunt this small group of wildebeest. So the hyena still has one die, but now the wildebeest will have two since it's a small group token. So we're gonna roll all three of our dice and then we'll line them up from highest to lowest next to each other. So in this example, the hyena has the highest first dice. So that cancels out the wildebeest dice die because it's lower. So now the wildebeest have one die left and the hyena has one die left. So now we're going to roll them again. And now the hyena's die is higher than the wildebeest die. And so that die is out, which means the hyena is successful in this case. So we're gonna record that on our data card. Winter, hunting activity. It was a small group wildebeest. Hunting and the hyena was hunting. It was an individual hyena. And this time the predator, the hyena was successful. And so when the predator is successful, we remove one individual wildebeest token from the game board. You always remove an individual wildebeest if they are unsuccessful in hunting. And so then our change in wildebeest population is minus one. So we would continue that. This hyena would then hunt the attempt to hunt the large group of wildebeest. And then we would do the same thing for this hyena and single wildebeest that are touching up here and this hyena and single wildebeest that are touching up there. Now that the wildebeest and hyenas have completed at all hunting positions, we completed our card for those other um, hunting interactions between the hyena and the wildebeest. Now it's the lion's turn to hunt. So it starts in the same way. If desired, the lion tokens, individual or small group, can move up to one space to get a better hunting position. So Teresa, would you like to move your lions to get a better hunting position? Yeah, yeah, no, I do want to move. So I'm gonna move mine over one space here. Right, so now we'll do the same hunting steps that we did for the hyenas, but with the lions. So at each location where a small group or individual lion is touching a wildebeest token, 
they'll compete using the dice. So now I'm going to roll my dice. There's one. There's the other. And since I just have one individual that she's hunting, I'm going to roll just one dice. And then we'll line them up to compare. And in this case, the five that Teresa rolled is bigger than my three. So I've lost this hunting event. And I'm going to remove my individual wildebeest piece from the game board. All right, then we would record that on our data card. So we're still in winter. This was a hunting activity. It was a individual wildebeest versus a small group lion. And the predator was success successful, which means our wildest wildebeest population decreased by one. So the lions and wildebeest would continue hunting in the same way the hyenas did. So for each touching uh, wildebeest with lion, they would compete using the correct number of dice and we'd record our data on our data card. So after the lions have finished hunting and we've recorded that data on our data card, that is the end of turn one. And so the first season has ended and now a new season will begin. And so the next turn then starts again with the wildebeest migration. So the wildebeest started the game in the turn one section. And now we're going to migrate the wildebeest tokens into the turn two or season two section. So to migrate the wildebeest, Sarah's going to move all the surviving wildebeest tokens to the correct turn location on the game board. And similar to the setup instructions we followed at the start, each token should be placed in only the green diagonal lined wildebeest boxes. Then each token must touch another wildebeest token. After the wildebeest have migrated into the turn two location, we would move through the other three events within the turn. We draw event cards, hyenas would hunt, and then lions would hunt. And remember there are four seasons total. So then at, we would move through that a total of four times as a whole, and then that would conclude the, the game. As a class, we'll then begin to analyze the data that we collected on our data card so that we can answer our lesson question of how do predators interact with the wildebeest migration. We hope this video helps you to better understand the game. Thanks for following along.